Hi everyone, welcome to Bad Weather Barbecue. I'm Johnny and today we're doing a two course family meal on the barbecue. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is a channel where we talk all things barbecue. And today we're gonna to be doing a two course family meal on a barbecue. We're gonna be focusing on a main and a dessert. In terms of the dishes that I've selected for today's cook, we're gonna be doing a smoked meatloaf with a tomato gravy for our main course. And for dessert, we're gonna be doing a cherry cobbler, or indeed, as we call it in the UK, a cherry crumble. I'm gonna be doing my barbecuing on my new Traeger Pro 575 today, but that doesn't mean you have to do the same. You can do these cooks on any barbecues that you have. Now there's quite a bit of cooking and quite a few ingredients in this one today. So we're gonna cut all the fluffy stuff here and we're gonna get straight into the kitchen. So we're in the kitchen now and we're gonna have a look at our meatloaf and our tomato gravy first. So this is the all of the ingredients that you're gonna need and I'm just gonna quickly walk you through what they are. Starting on the left hand side, we're gonna be looking uh, at one whole onion, four cloves of garlic and one tablespoon of olive oil. We're then gonna be combining our mince, our egg and our breadcrumbs with the following herbs and spices. A teaspoon of basil, thyme, creamy peppercorn sauce powder, pepper, tomato paste, salt and Worcestershire sauce. And the last part of the meatloaf is, and whilst the recipe doesn't necessarily call for this, what we are going to be doing is adding our very own uh, bacon lattice to the outside of it. In terms of the tomato gravy, really, really simple. What we've got here is half a cup of tomato juice. We've got 50 grams of beef dripping. We've got three tablespoons of plain flour, a dash of pepper, a dash of salt, and one cup of warm water. First step today is to warm up our frying pan and we'll be adding our olive oil, onions, and garlic to that. We're just gonna fry these through for about four or five minutes, and then we're gonna set them to one side to cool down when we combine the rest of our mixture. Okay, so that's been about four minutes now, so our onions and garlic are good to go. Uh, we're just going to set these to side to rest. Right, with our onion and garlic mix cooling, uh, it's now time to have a look at the main part of the meatloaf. So what I've got here are three pounds or 1.3 kilos of mince. I've got my egg, two beaten eggs, I've got my breadcrumbs, and then my spices, as I talked about earlier. So it's just a case of combining all of them. So that's the main part of our mixture. Now together, we're just going to add in our onions and garlic, like so, like that. And now it's simply a case of getting your hands dirty. Get some gloves on and get everything mixed up together. So that's our mixture combined now. What I am going to do though is I'm going to pop this in the fridge for about half an hour just to let it firm up so that it's, it's easier uh, when working with the bacon lattice. So we'll put this in for 30 minutes and we'll come back. Right, so whilst the mince is cooling, I thought it'd be good to get our bacon lattice set up. So you can see that uh, I've done one of these already. However, what I did want to do was just show you guys how we do this. We've got quite a bit of mince today, so I've, I've actually had to make two lattices. So that's fine because it allows me then to show you guys what to do. All right, so this is really, really straightforward. All I've done here is laid out eight pieces of streaky bacon. And what we then have to do is intertwine more bacon throughout those. And it's a really straightforward process. So I'll do a couple quickly and just show you how it's done. So what we're gonna start with is the first bit of bacon here, and then every alternating piece of bacon thereafter. So what I mean by that is you take your first one and you fold it back, third one, and then fifth one, And the seventh one, like so. Then all we do is we take another piece of bacon and we lie that across. And then take the bacon back. 
like so. There. So really straightforward. But then what you do next is we start with the second piece of baking and then every alternate piece. So number six and number eight. And then we lie our bacon across and we bring them back again. And it is simply a case of repeating that until you end up with this. All right, so what I've done here is I've transferred the lattice onto some cling film and put this on a board. That's purely just to help us during the rolling process. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna divide the meat into two, form uh, pretty much a sort of sa sausage shape here and then roll accordingly. So as you can see here, I've got half of my mince in there and sort of formed it into that sort of sausage shape. Uh, and now it's just a case of wrapping it. Now, don't worry if the lattice doesn't cover every part of it. Just keep some bacon aside uh, and we can just tidy that up later on. Oops, come on. Okay, and that's what it should look like when it's done. Okay, here's our second one. So same process. Brilliant. There. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wrap this back up in the cling film. We're gonna put these back in the fridge for about half an hour again, just to firm up before we hit them on the smoker. So whilst the meatloaf is cooling in the fridge, we're now gonna make our tomato gravy. And this is super simple. First off, just get regular pan over medium heat and add your 50 grams of beef dripping and just melt that down. That's the beef dripping melted. So it's time to add our flour, our salt and our pepper. And all we're gonna do is just mix this until it's lightly brown. Okay, so that's our roux now coming up lightly brown. So I'm happy with that. And now it's just a case of adding in our tomato juice and our water. And we just mix this until it's all blended in. Now that's all of our mixture combined. Uh, so all we do here is just simmer this for five minutes on a low heat. So that's our meatloaf now in the fridge, firming up, ready to go on the grill when we need it. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our cherry cobbler. First step in the process for making our cherry cobbler is dead straightforward. What we've got are 900 grams or two pounds of cherries. We're using black frozen cherries today. It's just whatever you can get your hands on is fine. We've got a quarter cup or 30 grams of honey quarter cup or 30 grams of dark brown sugar, and then a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And it's just a case of mixing them all together. Right, once you've mixed your cherries, just set them to the side for the time being. And now it's just a case of adding together two tablespoons of cherry brandy, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of thickening granules. And just mix them together. And with them mixed together, we simply add that to our cherries. And just give it a little bit of a mix. Right, step three, couldn't be simpler. All we're gonna do now is just spoon out our mixture into a larger baking pot. Okay, last piece of here is we just take two tablespoons of butter and what we do is we just break them up into little knobs and just pop them around the pie. All right, with our pie mix now ready to rock and roll, it's time to have a look at our cobbler. And this couldn't be simpler. All we've got is one and a half cups worth of digestive biscuits, four tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of caster sugar, one egg and a quarter cup of milk. So first step is to combine our biscuit 
We'll then add our sugar and then we will add our butter. We're not going to use the milk or the egg at this point, however, we will get around to using those shortly. So next step uh, is if you have a pastry blender, use that. If not, then just grab a couple of forks and all you want to do is just break apart your butter into your mix. So that's our butter now mixed into uh, the rest of the biscuit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our milk, quarter cup and one egg, like so. And what we'll do now is we will just continue the mixing process and just make sure that is all mixed in. So that's our mixture now done. So it's simply a case of taking a spoon, getting a portion like this, and just dropping it onto the cobbler. So that's our cobbler ready now too. Uh, if you're not cooking straight away, just pop this back in the fridge and it'll be fine until it's needed. So that's our cherry cobbler now in the fridge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head outside and we're gonna set up our grill. In terms of setup today, really, really simple. We're gonna be using the new Traeger Pro 575. We're gonna be using a mixture of cherry and hickory pellets. And we're gonna be cranking this bad boy up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. Okay, so our meatloaves have been in the fridge now for a wee while and it's now time to get them onto the grill. So we've set up today, as I said, we're on the Traeger and we're up to 175 degrees now. So it's time to get the meatloaves on. Okay, so recipe calls for 50 minutes uh, until they're done, so we'll come back and we'll check in about half an hour. All right, so we're at the 40 minute mark now, so let's just have a quick look, see how we're doing. Right, so they're, they're looking nice. However, I wanna make sure I've got a little bit more char on the bacon. So what I'm actually gonna do is just turn up the, the grill a little bit. I'm gonna put it up to 200 from 175 and probably give it another sort of 20 minutes and then have a look at it again. Okay, so it's been about an hour now and what we've actually done is we've moved the uh, meatloaves over to the side and we've actually put the pie in so that that's ready for when we finish our meal. So we're getting some nice char on the outside of the meatloaves at the moment, uh, but we just want that probably a little bit more. We're probably running at a temperature around a 67 internal at the moment, but we want it a little bit more than that for a more well done. So this is what they're looking like at the moment. So we'll probably hit this again in about another 10, 15, see how they're doing. All right, so we're about an hour and 20 into this cook and the meatloaves are ready to come off. So let's just have a quick look at them and then we'll pull them off. That's us back inside now and we've got our meatloaves and I'm really pleased to say they look fantastic. So let's have a quick look at these. So as we, as we can see, we've got some lovely charring on the bacon on the outside and Quite frankly, these are ready to go. So as you can see, we've got a fantastic smoke ring from the combination of the hickory and the cherry smoke. So really, really happy with that. Uh, and I think these are gonna be absolutely delicious. We're just gonna let this cool slightly because <laughs> it's burning having just come off uh, and then we'll do a little taste test. Okay, so I've cut a little bit off here and pitmaster privilege, let's, uh, let's just have a little taste. Lovely crispy bacon. That smoke ring looks amazing. Um, all of those spices and herbs that we put through actual meatloaf itself are brilliant. So I would absolutely class this as a win.
Okay, so we've got the cobbler out right now. It's probably taken about half an hour more than we thought it might, but I really wish you could smell this. It's amazing. So we'll uh, give you a quick look at that. And it's piping hot at the moment, so we'll have to wait for it to cool a little, but we'll, uh, we'll tuck in. So I'll make sure I put some photos up on the screen so you can see them. So I hope you enjoyed that video today. Uh, let me tell you, both of those dishes were absolutely delicious. So I'd highly recommend you giving them a shot. So if you liked that video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, it'd be great if you would consider doing so. As ever, please leave me a comment in the section below. I'm having a lot of fun at the moment, interacting with all of you guys and answering any questions you may have. So thanks very much for watching. You look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.